Do you ever have one of those days where you just want to mess with a synthesizer? Luckily for me, while driving today, I heard a song on the radio that had this cool sound that kind of sparked the idea for another sound, completely different from the sound that I heard. But I wanted to mess with peak, mod matrix, and key tracking. I think key tracking is heavily underestimated or heavily underused. Um, I know it was heavily underused by me for the longest time. Oh, I think I have a hair in my eye. Oh. But um, yeah, so let's just go to an initialized patch. Let's get an interesting core oscillator sound. What's, what's carousel? No. Ooh. That is dope. Why does it sound like Gauntlet? Anybody remember that game? I used to love that game. What I want to achieve with this sound is the filter opening and closing faster or slower depending on which key I press. That's kind of what key tracking is. In a nutshell, the lower notes you press, you can set those low values to be something on the synthesizer. And then the higher notes you press, those could be higher values sent to something else on the synthesizer. On most synthesizers, you have key tracking set to the filter. And usually if you just see a knob that just says key tracking, majority of the time, that's what it goes to. So for example, if I turn the resonance pretty high up and we turn key tracking off, listen to what happens to this sound when I turn key tracking up. See how it's the filter is being turned down? That's because this low note is sending a low value, turning the filter down. But let's reset this and play a high note. Oh, that is way too high. Let's see what happens when I turn the key tracking up now. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay, I think this sound might be a little too crazy to hear it. Let's do pulse width. You hear how the filter is turning up? We'll do it again here. So higher notes are sending higher values to the filter frequency and lower notes send lower values to the filter frequency. And this might be a little confusing because we're turning the same knob up while values are being split. And basically it's sending different values different ways based on the center point of your keyboard or wherever this key tracking is sent to. So that's key tracking in a nutshell, but what's cool on Peak is in the mod matrix, one of the sources for your modulation routings is keyboard. And this means I can send key tracking to whatever. So by default, right, we can hear this. Watch this. You wanna really mess things up? Send keyboard key tracking to the pitch of the oscillators by a random amount. Do you hear that? Versus back to zero. It's like kind of on, but kind of off. You can hear that this note is our middle C because this note does not change with key tracking. But all the other notes from this point higher will be kind of slightly higher pitch. The ones from there lower will be slowly, slowly, slightly lower pitch. I'm, I'm getting there, we're getting there. So let's take this to where I actually want to go, which is to the filter cutoff. But not just the filter cutoff, the LFO, LFO one, which is this LFO here. I guess I'll find my default pitch here. That'll work. So now what I want to do is in our mod matrix, keyboard tracking to LFO one's rate. And the reason I want to go to the rate is because I want this speed to change depending on which key I play. So if I play a high note and I turn this up, you hear how it's speeding up. But in that same movement of this turning up, our lower notes will be moving this slower. And because peak is polyphonic, you have eight voices and each voice has their own independent LFO.
Um, so that's a little intense. And this is kind of what I was afraid I was gonna run into. I'm turning the filter down here a little bit so it doesn't move as much. turn this way up. You hear they're all over the place. Especially if I do this one. Or this one. Right? Once in a while they kind of line up. I can't even tell when they're going to line up. This is beyond random. So I wanted this sound. But a little more control over this. So I think what I can do from here, one thing I wish Peak had was um, the destinations. I wish it had the mod slots in the destination. So I can say, for example, in slot two, the destination be mod slot one's depth. But since I don't have that, I can send, I think, let's see, I can send one of the envelopes, mod envelope one. No, we'll do mod envelope two to the, oh, wait. I think I just figured it out. Okay, I think I just figured it out. I'm gonna go back here. Ah, oh, I didn't figure it out. Oh, I did figure it out. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the, um, the LFO one depth amount on the, that's hardwired here on the board off. And then we still have this, nothing's happening to the filter. If I go to here and Set the destin, oh man, this is so confusing. Okay, 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 okay. I got this, I got this, I can explain this, I can explain this. Filter, filter frequency, direct, no. We're gonna use LFO one, just positive. By this much. So what's great about Peak is that you have two sources in each mod slot. When you add two sources to a destination, one will start to act, they kind of play off one another and one will start to act as a gate towards the other. I don't think it matters in which order they go. For example, if I were to set this to one of the animate buttons, like animate one, nothing happens until I press this. Right? So this also means if I set mod envelope two to the filter frequency, nothing's happening. But if I go to mod slot two, or mod envelope two, turn up our sustain, mod envelope two is now acting as a gate for LFO one being sent to the filter. So LFO one needs to pass through mod envelope two before it gets there. This means I can shape its sound, maybe even slower. There it is, hits it peak and then it starts coming back down. Make that even faster. Or I can say no decay, just go up to its sustain, right? No, that's not right, because our attack is still gonna go to max. This means I need to hit our sustain to full, and then add adjust the value here to maybe there. So now I can attack, change the attack time for how slow it gets to that point and then add a little bit of release. No effects besides reverb on here. It sounds like a delay, but it's not. Because it starts and starts kind of trickling in. And the key tracking is still affecting how fast those LFOs move.
So that's kind of key tracking in a nutshell. You can do some really weird stuff. We could even take this a step further and see how long this takes, or listen to how long it takes for this to open up. We'll make this really drastic. Right, if we push this even higher. It takes a while to get there. We can go to another mod slot and set the destination to be mod envelope two's attack time, resulting in uh, mod envelope two A for attack. So I like leaving these set to direct. That way I can just change the value. Boom, that is fast, immediate. There's no attack at all. And again, key track, boom, keyboard. This kind of sounds like it wants to be a didgeridoo for some reason. There we go. Let's turn up oscillator two a little bit. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Actually, I don't like oscillator two that much. It takes away from the power. Reverb. It's so thin sounding, we do need some more of this. Ooh, that's pretty. Anyway, key tracking in a nutshell. I appreciate you stopping by. Hope you learned something here today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next week. And until then, you already know the drill. One second, one second. I know you know the drill. I know you know the drill. Just give me a second. Share the love, share the knowledge, knowledge is power, peace.